Okay, and um, welcome back to MacNav Chemistry. Today we're going to have a look at how racemic mixtures form in chemical reactions and how the properties of the enantiomers formed can be different. Okay, so firstly, um, let's remember that a ra what a racemic mixture is. So a racemic mixture contains both the D and L enantiomers of a chiral compound in equal proportions. Okay, so let's just make sure we've fully understood that. So a racemic mixture is a mixture of organic chemicals which contains the D and the L enantiomer in equal proportions and therefore the racemic mixture does not rotate plane polarized light. Okay, so sometimes then in organic chemistry chemical reaction mechanisms result in racemic mixtures being formed. Okay, and an example of that is nucleophilic addition. So um, nucleophilic addition reactions result in racemic mixtures being formed because due to the reaction mechanism both enantiomers are produced in equal proportions. Okay, so let's look at this in a little bit more detail. Okay, so um, nucleophilic addition reactions. So let's take the reaction between ethanol, an aldehyde, um, and the Cn minus nucleophile, the cyanide nucleophile. Okay, so firstly, we need to recognize that in the ethanol, the arrangement of the H, that's the H there, the CH3, the CH3, and the double bond O, the double bond O groups around this central delta positive carbon take a planar orientation. Okay, so if I look at my ethanol, around this central delta positive carbon, I've got a CH3 group, an H, and an O, and they are all planar, okay? So that group, that group, and that group, if I had my piece of paper, they'd all sit on the piece of paper, okay? So let's think what effect that has then um, on where the CN minus can attack the delta positive carbon, okay? So I'm gonna pick this piece of paper up. My ethanol lies on that paper, okay? So, CN minus could attack from that side, or CN minus could attack the delta positive carbon from that side, okay? And it can do that, the CN minus could attack from that side, or from that side, with equal probability, okay? So let's look at it on the paper. Right, so this CN minus can attack my delta positive carbon of the, of the carbonyl group, the C double bond O group, from this side, or it could attack the delta positive carbon group on that side, okay, um, with equal probability. So I could end up with an enantiomer that has the groups orientated like that, or an enantiomer that has the groups orientated like that. Now, these two enantiomers, that is a non superimposable mirror image of that. Can't, I can't pick that up out of the page and fit it exactly on top of that. Okay, so that's an enantiomer, that's an enantiomer, okay and I've got them in equal proportions, so therefore I have a racemic mixture um, of, in this case, 2-hydroxypropane nitrile, meth eth prop. that's propane nitrile, and the OH group is on the 1, 2, it's on the second carbon, so it's 2-hydroxypropane nitrile. So let's read through this carefully. Um, the nucleophile, Cn- minus, can attack the delta-positive carbon of the C equals O group, that's the carbonyl group, with equal probability from both sides, resulting in the formation of equal quantities of both enantiomers of 2-hydroxypropane nitrile, and therefore it forms a racemic mixture. Okay. Right, okay, let's move on from that then now. Um, so we've understood that in some chemical reactions, um, racemic mixtures are formed, i.e. both enantiomers are formed. Right, when we're manufacturing drugs then, this is often the case. Okay, so many commercially available drugs have at least one chiral center. Okay, so lots of drugs have at least one chiral center, so therefore they have the potential when being synthesized to form enantiomers. Right, so when they are synthesized, Often both enantiomers are produced and racemic mixtures of the drug are formed. The problem is, is that although both enantiomers have the same structural formulae, their different arrangement of atoms in space 
means that they bind differently to receptor sites around the body and therefore can have very different physiological effects on the body. Okay, this is very, very important. Okay, so the enantiomers, they have the same structural formulae as we know from the definition of stereoisomerism, but they have a different arrangement of atoms in space. Okay, so this means that they actually bind to receptor sites in a completely different way, whether the receptor sites are in cells or um, the active sites of enzymes. Okay, some enantiomers will bind, some won't bind. Okay, so an example of this um, was the drug thalidomide, which when synthesized forms a racemic mixture, therefore contains equal quantities of both enantiomers. Um, however, although one enantiomer helps to combat morning sickness in pregnant women, um, the other enantiomer was a potent teratogen. Okay, so that means um, that it resulted in um, babies being developed um, incorrectly so, so something that causes the malformation of a fetus okay leading to babies being born without limbs okay right so the problem with the thalidomide um, is that even if we separate the two enantiomers um, as soon as the morning sickness effective one enters the body it forms the teratogenic enantiomer okay so this is the problem with it. You could spend a lot of money separating out the two different enantiomers of a drug, okay? But as soon as they enter the body, the aqueous nature of the body, okay, they immediately equilibrate and form the other enantiomer, okay? Right, so in this case, we would say that the two stereoisomers interconvert in vivo, i.e. within the human body. Okay, vivo meaning life within the human body. Okay, so in the case of thalidomide, separation of the enantiomers would therefore be a pointless exercise. Okay, but having said this, we can actually separate enantiomers, even though in, in thalidomide's case we wouldn't do it, um, it is something that is possible. Okay, so having said this, for other compounds, when separation is beneficial, this can be achieved in a process known as resolution. Okay, so in resolution, the mixture of enantiomers is reacted with another chiral re reactant. Okay, um, the products from the reaction have different physical properties. Okay, such as solubility in certain solvents, um, so can therefore be separated by methods such as chromatography. Okay, so resolution is the process by which we separate out our two enantiomers. Okay, that's it for today. Um, I hope that's been helpful. And thank you for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe and click on the bell notification to stay updated.